Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, an idealistic apprentice, the truth of magic, horrible consequences, manga releases, and spelling. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Spark and Manga Review, episode 544. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga Review. I'm your host, Zen, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, and what's up? Hope you're doing well and hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode of this awesome podcast. You can find it at www.spyarkin.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-I-R-E-K-N, care to find us one way or the other. And if you're watching on YouTube, remember to like, share, subscribe, and click on that bell for notification for when we release new episodes. And remember to subscribe at our website at www.spyarkin.com and on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. And with that in mind, let's actually get to it, because if you remember from that last episode, I spun that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga. And it kicked in, we are reviewing a pretty unique manga, a different manga, one that's kind of, well, let's get to it. So the manga that we're talking about today is one that was written by Komome Shirahama, who actually does artwork for a lot of the Marvel and DC comics, which is pretty cool. It's a cover artist. Uh, this was published by Kodansha, released over here by Kodansha Comics USA. It was released in Morning 2 magazine, and originally in 2016. It is still coming out with 13 volumes. It is not complete yet. There is an anime coming out eventually. It's currently on Weird Hiatus, but we're going to wait and see when that comes out. It is a fantasy series that is a Senen series that's original title was Tongari Boshi no Atari, but it is known in English simply as Witch Hat Atelier. And Witch Hat Atelier is a very unique story about the uh, desire for magic and the cost of getting what you wish for. To go further into it, this manga is the story, like I said, about a young girl whose name is Coco. And Coco's dream in life, the one thing she wants is to learn magic because in the world that she inhabits... Magic does exist. There are wizards that are everywhere and witches that do magic powers. And only they can use magic. And she's entranced by this because when she was younger, she saw some beautiful magic. And she l- wants to learn it, but she is a normal person or what the witches call an outsider. So she can't really use any magic. Or so she thinks. Her main life is working at a tailor shop with her mother where she loves her mother. Her mother is the most important thing in her life. And she helps around, but occasionally unique things do happen. And she gets a witch whose name is Quife going there to, well, he's there for reasons. And she ends up talking to him about magic because she's fascinated by the subject, how interesting it is. And he is more impressed with the fact that she is able to do stuff with her own skills. She's able to make perfect lines because she is a tailor. She was trained to be a tailor. She can fix clothes. She can make repairs. She can mend things. And it's her own type of magic, which is beautiful. And he compliments her about it. But she's more excited about, you know, being able to make things fly, blasting things, doing this and that. And she tells Quife that apparently when she was younger, when they went to the city, a mysterious figure gave her a book saying, anyone can do magic. Here is a book for you. And gave her a pen. She didn't know what the deal with that was, but he was interesting and different, even though he had a weird veil on his face. And Quifre is pretty, well, he's like, this is kind of interesting, but I'd like no more. But as they're talking, an incident occurs. Something pretty bad happens, and Quifre has to do some magic to fix the day. So he tells Coco, listen, I'm going to fix this, but I need to go somewhere private because the magic can be pretty powerful and can hurt somebody. So she's, she wants to watch him do his magic, but he's saying, you can't watch. So she begrudgingly listens and kind of nods her head and does this. The only problem is that when she eventually does succumb to her own curiosity, she finds out the unique truth. And what is the unique truth? Is that magic is a con. Anyone can use magic. Magic is super simple to do. It is you have to use a pen with specific ink to draw spells. Based on how the drawing of the spell is, magic happens. So literally anyone can do that. And as I said earlier, she was given a pen that looks like a magic wand and a book with a bunch of seals on it. So because of this, she's intrigued and wants to know more. The fact is, it's super simple and easy to make spells. This is great. She's going to do great things. And she even brings up the fact that her mother says, you know, you can't be a magician. You can't leave. And she wants to stay with her mother because she loves her mother, even though she really wants to learn magic. So she's going to explore on her own and work on this big mistake as she's experimenting with this she doesn't know what these spells do and this is a pretty 
important book. Unfortunately, when she uses the book, magic happens. She's able to make a small little thing happen by copying the spell. And she figures out some basic knowledge, like the bigger the circle is, the more powerful the spell. The smaller the circle, the least powerful and based on little things she's teaching herself. However, be careful what you wish for because if you don't know how to use magic, bad things happen. And for her, she copies a spell that she doesn't know in the book, which has no writing or reasoning. And Quifrey, who has left the shop, feels the magic building up and runs back because she did something bad. To translation, she done fucked up. And, well, this spell causes a horrible incident to happen. And what is this incident? Well, she ends up destroying the book that she had copied so no one can know what the spell is. So she can't find the what the antidote to the spell is and it causes a huge explosion to envelop her home her mother's shop and her mother turning them all to crystal and this is really bad because like i said she just essentially turned her mother to stone and there is no way to fix it because she lost the book the book is currently encased in stone they can't get back into it so according to quifre there's two options option number one she can go to the knights who are the enforcement of the witch community and they're going to wipe her memory so she'll never remember she had magic and she'll never remember her mother again. And option number two is that she can join Quifre's atelier, his school of magic, his home. He will apprentice her and teach her how to use magic so they can fix the problem. And that's the only way to save her mother. And she ends up deciding to become a witch. And she's going to go through the, the trials and tribulations of becoming a witch while trying to discover her magic and deal with the fact that she is an outsider in this world where technically she should not have had her mind erased. And most of the community wants her mind erased or looks down upon her while she is trying to better herself. And that's what this manga is about. The manga is about Coco becoming the great witch that she can be and learning about the atelier and everything that is going on. Our main character, Coco, is a green-haired girl who is vibrant and thinks about things differently. A lot of people are in the world and they do their magic in specific ways. They, they follow things and because she's an outsider, she's able to think outside the box in different ways. And also the fact that she is someone who is a tailor, she can utilize that in very good ways. Like her speciality by volume three is literally to, I can draw a straight line perfectly, which no one else can do because she's used to marking down clothes to cut them, to score them. And she is able to think about things backwards. Like, okay, we have to make a spell to stop a giant dragon. Well, why don't we make it more like something cushy and comfortable instead of something that's scary because magic, according to Quifre and a lot of people, is to better people, make people be happy. And let's make this dragon happy instead of fighting it so it'll relax and we can leave it alone. And that's the thing for it. It is a very whimsical and different take on magic itself. And I love the fact that the story is essentially a muggle ends up in Hogwarts because of an accident and gets magic and now has to fix her problems. And there are other characters who are in there who are unique. There is her roommate who she looks down on everybody because she wants to be the best because she has issues at home. We have another one who her whole mentality is, I want to do magic that makes everyone happy, but I want to do it my own way. I don't want to follow anybody's magic. It's got to be me or no way. And then we have another one who's just like, I like creating my own magic. I don't want to copy anyone else. That's her deal. And each of these characters does something different and they're all very well developed and you want to know more about them. It's very nuanced how each character is well developed. I mean, we also have Queefrey's whole backstory and what's going on with him because he, well, I don't want to spoil too much. There's a reason why I didn't go too far into the manga because there are so many really cool elements about it in different statements going on. Like Queefrey has a grudge against these beaded witches who are the cause of what happened because there's more going on with Coco in the witch who gave her the power the book and the wand there is stuff going on which is setting up for this large culmination of events and it is engaging and fascinating and with the humble bundle i was talking about a couple of weeks ago which i finally paid off and i'm getting all of it i got all of which had to tell you up to 13 in digital copy but i had to buy this because this manga is tremendous it is wonderful and it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun. The art style is great. I hope the anime comes out soon because it would be visually stunning. 
and the magic system is unique. It is seals and drawing, and there are a bunch of rules which they get into later volumes about how to use magic. Like, you cannot let someone else see it. So most wizards have big cloaks, and they have little rings and little notepads that they're able to use under the cloak. So magic appears, but no one sees you do it. Also, there's a whole ranking system of magic on how to become an apprentice and moving forward to becoming your own independent witch. In the first volume, we go over the first trial, which is kind of insane for a beginner, but of course our main character is really good at it. But then we have other trials going on, one which is to be able to use magic in public. You still have to hide your magic, but you could use it in the, in the outside world. Next one is being able to be given permission to do trials. It's a very well-developed world, and I actually love this manga. And for that reason, I have to give this our highest rating, and and you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really, really cool. Read this now. It is a great manga with action, adventure. Uh, there's some... It's not implied, but there is a... You could you can infer there's a romance between Queef Ray and his roommate slash um, minder, Ofri. I know I'm pronouncing his name wrong. It's kind of difficult to say, but there's a whole thing with them, which a lot of the communities think that there is an LGBT th thing going on. Also, if you read which had a kitchen, which is a spinoff, there's stuff going on. So it's, will they, won't they, are they, we don't know. They don't they let you, leave it up to your imagination. And I love the fact that they do that. It's not implied, but it's not denied. So that's well done. Uh, I love the characters in this. Um, I think my favorite character besides Coco is, the apprentice to the uh, ink maker who has his own story arc that's really not heartbreaking but it is one which makes you want to root for him so uh what are your thoughts did you like it did you enjoy it did you not like it let me know your thoughts you can email me personally at zan that's xan at spirekin.com or you could tweet me at spirekin uh or sorry x me at spirekin i'm also on blue skies all the contact information is in the show notes or you can leave a comment down below and now let's actually get to the manga question of the week. And that's actually kind of important one for this week. It's actually not really. I would just say, do you want to be in the atelier? But I thought a little bit easier than that is going to be. Would you use magic if you could? If, you, if we lived in a world where magic existed, would you use magic? Or would you be too afraid to based on the consequences? Let me know. Email me at zanspirekin.com or tweet me at Spirekin. Let me know. And with that in mind, let's actually get to the next part, which is going to be the manga releases for the week. And we've got some nice ones this week, so let's get to it. First off, starting from the top, we've got 365 Days to the Wedding Volume 2. I picked this up immediately because I loved that manga so well, because it was such a fun read when we talked about that earlier. So we, that came out this week. Then we had Akane Banashi Volume 4, Alpi and the Soul Seeker Volume 2, Candy and Cigarette Volume 7, The Dawn of the Witch Volume 5 Light Novel, Hyatt the Combat Butler Volume 43, I Want to End This Love Game Volume 1, I Was Reincarnated as the Seventh Prince So I Can Get My Time, Take My Time Perfecting My Magical Ability Volume 10, the manga, Love is an Illusion Volume 5, Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir Volume 3, My Izakai Life Volume 11, Past the Monster Meat Milady Volume 2, Plus Sized Elf Second Helping Volume 2, Punch Drunk Love Volume 1, Sakura Saku Volume 2, Saving 8,000 Gold in Another World for My Retirement Volume 5, the manga, Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle Volume 23, Status Royale Volume 1, The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses Volume 8, The Great Yokai War Guardians Volume 2, The Villainess Who's Been Killed 108 Times She Remembers Everything Volume 2, The White and Blue Between Us manga and then last and not least we have welcome to demon school irimakun volume six and so these are the manga releases for the week which ones are you most excited about let me know me personally my top five for the week are going to be uh 365 days to the wedding volume two like i said i just picked it up i'm loving where this series goes and we're getting more into their weird relationship candy and cigarettes volume seven this is a weird guilty pleasure about a guy who's trying to pay for his grandson's operation and a girl who is really psychotic uh, I Want to End This Love Game Volume 1 seems engaging. Past the Monster Meat Milady, someone has actually commented on, and I was actually really excited to check this out. So we're going to see how it goes. And then Status Royale Volume 1, well, it looks kind of cool. Uh, so which ones are you excited about? Email me at zanspirekin.com or tweet me at Spirekin. And beforehand, with that in mind, before we go any further, I'd like to thank you all for checking out this podcast. 
I appreciate each and every one of you. Every email I get, every comment I get gives me more incentive to do this podcast, and I love doing this. I'm going to keep doing this so I'm an old man who has to read manga with thick glasses and large print uh, uh, manga, and I'm being bothered by a cat today, and I'm going to leave this in because cats are awesome and Maddie is awesome. So thank you so much. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and let's get to that part that you have all been waiting for, the most popular part of this podcast. And what are we talking about? We are talking about that one, that only... Hold on. Hold on one sec. Gotta take a second because we do have a cat here. But, yep. The Wheel of Manga! Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on. And what I've done is I've assigned a manga title to each of the 10 slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin the wheel. Whatever number it lands on, the manga that's in that spot is what I'm going to review in the next episode of the Spire Good Manga Review, episode 545. It's been quite some time. We're going to spin and see we're going to view the next episode. I've got some great titles on here, but let's spin and see what we're going to do. Number four. Cat from, an, from Our World and the Witch. This is an Izakai where a cat becomes a giant creature in another world. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Well, we're going to find out. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this episode. As usual, I am your host, Zan. I am Gonsville. I'll catch you guys next time, and keep going.